Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Salam alaikum, everyone. So, here's my topic. What is the most important thing in a life of a believer? SubhanAllah, so, we, we know that uh, we are here for one purpose. And... Uh, we are here to redeem ourselves back to God's kingdom. This is the most important thing in, in the life of a believer. Over and over uh, we read in the Quran that only those who are absolutely devoted to God alone will be saved. 3740, only only God's servants who are absolutely devoted to Him alone will be saved. Again, in 3774, only God's servants who are absolutely devoted to Him alone are saved. 37128, only God's servants who are absolutely devoted to, to Him alone are saved. And 37160, only God's servants who are absolutely devoted to Him alone are saved. So, uh, we should ask ourselves, how can I devote myself absolutely to God alone? Um, in the introduction, uh, uh, under proclaiming one religion for all, all the people, in the middle it says, anyone who submits to God and devotes the worship to God alone is a submitter. And then again, um, in the introduction, it says submission is the religion whereby we recognize God's absolute authority and reach an unshakable conviction that God alone possesses all power. The natural and it goes on and no, no other entity possesses any power to uh, it, that is independent of Him. The natural result of such a realization is to devote our lives and our worship absolutely to God alone. So, the reason is obvious. God is the only entity that possesses all power. An intelligent person will say, what am I doing going to other entities for help? And then again, we read the same introduction that uh, all submitters are devoted to God alone. And do not set up any idols beside God are redeemed into God's eternal kingdom. And then uh, we, it ends like this. It says, a criteria of a true submitter is that they will find nothing objectionable in the Quran. SubhanAllah, we can go back. Uh, okay. With the history. Satan acknowledged this. Satan acknowledged the, the, the fact that um, during um, when he was uh, uh, coming up with this idea that I could be a god beside God, he acknowledged this. He said, he said, to, he said, My Lord, since you have willed that I go astray, I will surely entice them on earth. I will send them all astray, except those among your worshippers who are absolutely devoted to God alone. He said, I swear by your majesty that I, will, that I will send them all astray, except your worshippers who are absolutely devoted to you alone. So let's examine the depth of this uh, statement. How do, you, how do you devote yourself absolutely to God alone? We go with the example of Abraham. Abraham was never an idol worshipper. The debate, I want to read this, uh, uh, Abraham's debate with the idol worshippers. says, recall that Abraham said to his father, Azar, how could you worship statues as gods? I see that you, are, that you and your people have gone far astray. We showed Abraham the marvels of the heavens and the earth and blessed him with certainty. When the night fell, he saw... A, sign, a shining planet, maybe this is my Lord, he said. 
when he disappeared, he said, I do not know, I do not like gods that disappear. When he saw a moon rising, he said, maybe this is my Lord. When he dis disappeared, he said, unless my Lord guides me, I will be with the strayers. When he saw the sun rising, he said, this must be my Lord, this is the biggest. But when he said, he said, oh my people, I denounce your idolatry. I have devoted myself absolutely to God alone. The one to the one who initiated the heavens and the earth, I will never be an idol worshiper. His people argued with him. He said, do you argue with me about God after he has guided me? I have no fear of the idols you set up. Nothing can happen to me unless my, word, my Lord wills it. My, Lord, my Lord's knowledge encompasses all things. Would you not take heed? Why should, I fear, why should I fear your idols? It is you who should be afra afraid, since you worship instead of God idols that are absolutely powerless to help you, that are utterly powerless to help you. Which side is more deserving of security, if you know? Perfect security for the believers. And then it goes on to say, those who believe and do not pollute with their, wor their worship with idol worship, their belief with idol worship, have deserved the perfect security and are truly guided. So we learn from this example, of course we know that Abraham was mocking the idol worshippers, uh, telling them how stupid you are by going to these powerless creatures for help and protection. Um, this is uh, an everlasting example that, that we know uh, the smart thing is to, to, to turn to God and, and be devoted to God alone. And this is why uh, devotion to God alone uh, has to do with la ilaha illallah, which means no God but God. And that's in uh, other examples uh, that we see in the, in the Quran. For example, uh, the examples of, uh, inshallah, I'll, I'll go into it more, uh, of other prophets. Uh, we know that devotion equals no idol. Devotion means no, no idols in your life. In fact, we see that uh, this is uh, mentioned in the same surah, surah 37, verse 35. It says the first commandment. When they are told, la ilaha illallah, there is no God but beside God, they turn arrogant. Absolute devotion to God alone is mentioned in this same surah four times. And if you add the surah 35, I'm sorry, so, 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 uh, so, uh, uh, verse 35, plus the four other times that says only those who are absolutely devoted to God alone saved, it adds up to 437, which is a multiple. SubhanAllah, this, this is a confirmation that devotion has to do with no idols. Again, no idols in our, in our lives. Most believers in God who worship Him regularly, end up messing up their devotion and won't be saved simply by dividing their devotion. We see that in 33.4. Devotion to God is indivisible. God did not give man any two, uh, God did not give any man two hearts in his chest, nor did He give your wives whom you strange according to your custom into mothers. So we can see in these... Um, Verse that God wants us to devote ourselves with all our heart, all our soul, soul to God alone. Example of uh, uh, Solomon. By loving the material things and our possessions, uh, worldly things, we can mess up our devotion. Example of Solomon, we... we I'm not going to read all the verses, but you can see that, that as soon as he realized that his material possessions caused him to forget God or his worship, he got rid of them. And the footnote says, Solomon missed his afternoon prayer because of his horses. To nullify Satan's possible claim that Solomon loved his horses more than loving God, he got rid of his horses.
again, in Matthew, uh, we see the example of Jesus. It says, um, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate, one, hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to, to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? So, I want to get into how, as submitters, we can mess up our devotion. One of the things that, that it's one of the hardest things that, that we, we run into is, is, you know, choosing between God and, you know, others. Um, you know, uh, or, or this, this particular one is, is uh, acquiescing to, to people's wishes. Like uh, the examples that are given uh, in 4141 through 145. And you can see, I'm not going to read the whole verses, but, but uh, for the, because of the time, uh, but you can see that those who go between the two groups, neither belonging with the believers or the disbelievers, they uh, waver in between. They cannot, they cannot stay devoted. Uh, they cannot stay devoted be, uh, and devote their worship to God alone and their religion to God alone because of this this issue because of their devotion is to their friends or, or loyalties to, to their, to their uh, uh, peers. Um, in last verse, I'm going to read that. It says, on only those who repent, reform, and hold fast to God and devote their religion absolutely to God alone will be counted with the believers. God would bless, will bless the believers with a great recompense. By allying ourselves with, with uh, those who oppose the truth, this messes up our devotion. You know, we have the important criteria. It says, proclaim if your parents, your children, your siblings, your spouses, your, fam and, uh, your family, the money you have earned, the a business you worry about, and the home you cherish are more beloved to you than God and His messenger and striving His cause, then just wait until God brings His judgment. God does not guide the wicked people. So since the odds are overwhelming, overwhelming against any human being to actually believe and devote the worship to God alone, it is virtually impossible to see a whole family believe. Thus, most believers have been faced with the question, either me or God and His messenger. The question is consistently stated by spouses of the believers or their parents, their children, etc. Consistently, the believers made the right choice. This is a mandatory test for all believers. This is another thing that, that uh, we've been dealing with in our community, you know, uh, and, and back and forth. Uh, goes with the same criteria that there are those who abuse the master by practicing idol worship, dividing the believers, and providing comfort to those who oppose God and His messenger. They solemnly swear our intentions are honorable. God bears witness that they are liars. So any master that opposes the truth or doesn't stand with, with the truth is, is uh, not devoted absolutely to God. And, and believers uh, realize that and they know that they cannot acquiesce to people's wishes or you know, uh, shift their loyalties because of uh, these... Uh, worldly relationships. God says in the Quran that on the day of resurrection, you will disown one another, you will curse one another. So is it worth uh, risking our salvation, being saved? Because we, we cannot be, we cannot be uh, looking at this life uh, as this, uh, this, this is it. You know, we have to be very, very vigilant on the fact that we have to be uh, on the side of God no matter who doesn't like it, no matter who's on the other side. Uh, and, you know, all these relationships are a test. Uh, our money is a test. Everything is a test to show if you are absolutely devoted to God alone. If you love God the most, our devotion must be to, to Him alone. 
The idols disown their idolizers. Two two one sixty five. Yet more people the, some people then some yet some people set up the idols to rival God and love them as if they are God. Those who believe love God the most. If only the transgressors could see themselves when they see the retribution, they will realize then that all power belongs to God and God's retribution is awesome. Submission the only religion. Indeed, those who submit themselves totally, absolutely to God alone while leading a righteous life will receive the recompense from their Lord. They have nothing to fear nor will they grieve. Only those who come to God with their whole heart will be saved. So the devotion uh, has to be under all circumstances. Um, we can see this, uh, you know, in, in the inter introduction again, I, I wanted to refer to to uh, under the most gracious, most merciful. It says even the, our worldly dimensions, in our, even in our worldly dimension, any enterprise expects the employee to be loyal and devoted to the welfare of the em employer and, and, the imp inter and the enterprise, of the enterprise. So this tells me that, that why should God want to keep the people who are not loyal to him? It doesn't, doesn't make sense. Um, a, a guided believer is devoted to God alone uh, and rejoices in seeing any other believer who is devoted to God alone. And this is what unites us, our devotion to God. So I want to end with... Uh, <laughs> Remembering the example of... Uh, Abraham, it says, um, among his followers was Abraham, he came to his Lord wholeheartedly. And talking about other believers, that they reverenced the most gracious in their privacy and came wholeheartedly. And uh, obviously, a person who loves God the most realizes that, that, that nobody and nothing else in this world can benefit them and help them and that they should be absolutely devoted to God in order to be saved and that God is uh, the one who possesses all power. And even Quran in 331, 331 says, proclaim, if you love God, you should love me. I mean, you should follow me, meaning the Quran. God will then follow, God, God will then love you and forgive your sins. God is forgiver, most merciful. Mashallah, we, we uh, as a community, this is our, our only goal and uh, we strive to, to devote our lives, our, uh, you know, all our affairs, everything to be absolutely, to, to be devoted to God and not to waver because uh, we're going to be faced with challenges and we're going to be faced with uh, situations where we have to show where our loyalty lies. Abs we, we have no... Uh, other purpose here. There's no other purpose. For a believer, this is the only purpose. And we cannot take this life uh, too lightly and, and basically go uh, with our desires and our uh, relationships and all of that. And that's it, mashallah. Okay, so any questions or comments? Okay, so it's Raj. So um, we we all, as a submitters, we have crossed that uh, idol worship thing. We are doing the practices, and what else you you see um, will be um, how to improvise our devotion to. To God alone, because whatever your criteria you set up, uh, like Solomon's criteria, and then being a hypocrite, and then opposing, uh, not siding with the with the enemies of God, mashallah, as a community, we are doing everything good. What else do you think, as a as a community and as an individual, um, we should do to better our devotion to God alone? Um, mashallah. Um, my my only. Uh uh, response is, is to, to follow 
everything that Quran says because the criteria of a, of a true submitter is that, that we should accept everything and, and uh, try our best to put it, put it in practice. Uh, obviously, uh, the first and foremost important thing in our, in our believer, believer's life is to give up all, all idols. You know, we come uh, here with uh, having tendency to, to get dependent on uh, money, on, uh, you know, material things and on relationships. These are the things that we, we are dependent uh, uh, to begin with. So, so our job is to start cutting all these dependence and devote ourselves to, to God by, by uh, you know, showing our loyalty only to God and that, that we can never, ever... Uh, you know, uh, rely on anything or anyone other than God. Uh, w once you do that, once you do that, you 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 become in, uh, totally dependent on God, and and uh, you realize that you know uh, this life is is an illusion, and and everything about this life is an illusion, and we are here just to uh, reach this conviction, this solid conviction, unshakable solid conviction to to uh, uh, know. Who, only God possesses all power, and and th th this is this is why Abraham's example was perfect security happens when you do that when you you know cut 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 all your ties with uh, with uh, with the idols that we have in, in our lives and and devote ourselves uh, absolutely to God and and you will be, as soon as you do that you realize that you're you're free man you you know you don't you, you don't you know you don't worry you don't have any fear. Uh, you're in perfect security uh, because you know you have a God who never breaks His word. You have a God who never, you know, uh, turns His back on you, and and He has all the power to give you all the things you're after in this life. So it it makes perfect sense that an intelligent person, you know, accepts that. In Surah six seventy, Surah six ayah seventy six, you are talking about the shining planet. Do you know which planet is that? No, it doesn't matter which planet, as long as as long as uh, as long as the idea was introduced uh, that you know uh, none of these things that you 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 look at to to seek power has no power. Um, you know, it 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 was just symbolic to say that that even the biggest star, which was uh, sun out there, is this is the biggest. This is a, this can help me. He proved his point. He, he said, "Wait a minute, you're relying on these things that are all creations." Go to the Creator. Thank you for your speech. So, um, so Q, I see you as a mashallah devoted submitter, but as long as you've been in the path, what are some of the things that maybe a couple examples in your life that you're working on to further devote yourself to God? I'm no different than any other uh, human being. I, I, I have been. Um, struggling with material things in my life, provision, uh, all these things that we, we come across, all, all, every one of us are, are after these things, okay? And obviously, uh, provision is, is one of the things that, that uh, as a bread earner, you, you think about and you think that, um, you know, uh, now I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to, you know, make this much money, then I'm safe now. You know, this is something something that we all think that our savings, our money, our wealth, or all these be the backup to to uh, to take care of us. But but uh, little do we know that that all of these things are are all controlled by God. And and once we realize God's power, once we realize who He is, and uh, He will He never breaks His promise, and we we do not uh, doubt Him, then uh, all of these things will just take. God, God says, "I'll take care of you." He, he'll, he'll do it, and and that's what I, I struggled with, uh, uh, you know, some some time ago, and, and I still have doubts, but I'm I'm going to mashallah get over get over them. Yeah. Okay, so actually we're almost out of time, so I'll just do all the Then, uh, if we still have time for other Q and A speeches, I'll come back to everybody else. So all the First of all, thank you again for the speech and the whole thing. Uh, prior to this. Uh, this organization, alhamdulillah, it's a congregation. And by God's grace, it is showing after a couple of days, this is a, one of the greatest congregations ever from the time I started to become a submitter, alhamdulillah. 
and it was so peaceful and it was so beautiful that it shows, am I right? Yeah. That it shows the purity that God promised to us that we are the true believers. Okay. Inshallah, it's going to continue by God's grace. And we are going to be the Ummat of Ibrahim by the uh, God's grace. Rashad taught us what to do in order to be a true submitters according to Quran. And we learn and we continue and we know we are the ones that God wants to guide us. And this is the greatest thing. Devotion that you were talking about and you were emphasizing here should be divided to ourselves too. And I would really appreciate if you guys introduce to us who were involved in this gathering to make it so beautiful. And thank to God, of course, he guided everybody. Okay. But there were individuals that they put this gathering together and I would like, in behalf of everybody, to thank them all okay. uh, before we end this session. Okay. Actually, and say that, hey, Allah go for it, please. And let us have more and more. And let the whole world know that when God wants to give victory to a group, he will give it. Marshall. That's right. Yeah.